Okay, it just happens to be Sunday afternoon, June the 15th, 2014. And uh, as we were saying, Friday, this past Friday was Friday the 13th with a full moon. And I think the next time it's going to take place is like uh, 2049 or 45 or it's rare. It's a rare okay. occur occurrence uh, to have a full moon on Friday the 13th. Okay. Welcome everyone. I didn't see it. No, I didn't see it. I don't look, I up, I don't look up either. Welcome everyone to, pro um, to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and I'm coming to you live and recorded uh, for the internet uh, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and it happens to be Fajr's Day. Happy, happy Fajr's Day. I say Fajr because that's from uh, Austin Powers, a gold member. Gold member, you know, he, 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 he was Dutch. So he couldn't pronounce Father. Father's Day. Father's Day. It is Sunday, Good. not Saturday, because Saturday I was performing at the uh, Historic Patterson Museum. And I want to thank um, the director for hosting us, uh, Mr. Giacomo Di Stefano. I salute you. Uh, I was with uh, Renaissance Man Can Create. And it ended up being a fairly good uh, day. You know, it was windy and chilly. But yes, today is Father's Day, and uh, you know people don't really celebrate Father's Day that much. Only Mother's Day. Hey, but it doesn't can, surprise me because anybody can be a father. They can get fudgy the whale from Carvel. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and, and hopefully not another necktie that he probably doesn't need. But uh, uh, you know, father. Anybody can be a father, but you only have one mother. A father is simply a pollinator, a fertilizer, Urgh. a fertilizer of the egg, of the wavel. You know, so uh, that's the way it goes with that. But you know, it's a day. Uh, Americans, uh, the American culture, if you want to call it that, they love to have too many holidays because uh, every time there's a holiday, some retail business is making money. Isn't that so, Chief? Hey, sometimes uh, maybe Americans like a lot of holidays because we work harder than other nations. Right. And it, we don't have the time off that other nations. There's no leisure time. There's there's no uh, not too much time to spend with your loved ones. Exactly. Uh, and plus they, they like excuses to drink. <laughs> Americans do, you know, which is another deal. Um, uh, hey, I heard... Uh, Ric Flair's schedule was so busy from watching his documentary, he was so booked that he only saw his children seven days out of the year. Hey. You know, I mean, that's yikes. That's, that's a career right. person, all right, but I think he felt bad about that. Oh, gee. Oh, he felt pretty bad. And, uh, uh, well, Were that's, they young kids? Well, since. Because yeah, that's worse. Since, yeah, yeah. Since they were young and, uh, uh, you know, his son admitted, you know, in an interview, uh, I wish I had a, wish I was able to see my father more than I did. And, uh, you know, I don't know who to blame, the promoter? Well, you can blame your capitalistic system, because that's what it does. It breaks up, it breaks up families. Yeah. Because you become married to the corporation. Because... Not your wife and family. With crony, with American crony capitalism, it is profit before people and the planet. When I say planet, I mean the environment. Unfortunately, it is the devil's economics. I, we say that over and over, but it is. So anyway, it's a beautiful, windy, dry day on Father's Day. And uh, you can see we're going all natural. Yeah, it was supposed to be warmer, That's why, I, I, but it didn't get there to put the air on. It was supposed to be 82 80, degrees yeah. on Friday. It's going to be 88, oh, it's 89, getting, it's getting, 90. See? Oh my and humid or dry? Oh, I can't stand humid, but it's going to be humid. Oh boy. So, so welcome to summer weather this week. And you know they say going to Arizona, well, 
Yeah, it's hot, but it's dry. It's Get dry out of here. It's still hot. Well, a pizza oven is dry, and you wouldn't want to stick your head in it. Goddamn right. Okay, let me get the formalities over with on, on Father's Day. I'm going to pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. And yes, we might hear a barking dog after I oh, do this. Welcome aboard our uncensored, uh, hard-hitting truth starship newsletter censored. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you doing this Father's Day weekend, Before sir? Before you came, there were three or four dogs barking out there. Four? Really? Yeah. Oh my God. They were like, having a ball. It was. Uh, it was like a. It was a classical orchestra. Of barking. They were having a ball. Except if they would have did, done it now, I wouldn't be having a ball. <laughs> I saw a video the other day of a dog that was barking for 12 hours straight. How does it? Was it a small dog? Because usually uh, middle size. they have Napoleonic complex. Oh, mid size. Mid size. Well, it must have been stressed out for some reason. I mean, an animal is not going to do that. Go go into a barking marathon unless there's a problem. Should have had laryngitis by the fourth hour. Yep. I mean, uh, many owners should not have pets, just like many parents should not be parents. You know, it's just it's the way it is. But let me get it going here. Poor Tracy Morgan lost his leg, from what I hear. They had mutated. That's what I heard. Oh, boy. And of course, one of his co-workers, maybe he was a writer, died because of Walmart truck driver's slave driving schedule. Thank you, uh, the Walton family, the, uh, what is his name, uh, Rob Walton, scumbag what, Rob Walton, and the rest of his clan. Thank you for uh, making truck drivers drive without sleep for a whole day, 12 to 24 hours straight, with no rest. And uh, this is what happens. Somebody profits, lost profits, their life. Profits in, before people. Uh, the, 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 the writer, uh, I'm sure a co-worker of Tracy Morgan died. And the others are seriously, critically injured. And Tracy Morgan, uh, wh whom I liked, uh, lost his leg. This is real. Uh, you, you know Walmart is going to be hit with a humongous lawsuit, being that celebrities a celebrity lost his leg. I hope Tracy Morgan hammers them like they've never been hammered before. I would make up my lifelong vendetta if I was in his situation. You know, but uh, hey, we're talking about Rob Walton, the guy who uh, held back on paying his employees their whopping minimum wage. And a, and a federal judge ordered him to pay up plus penalties, and then he tells his Walmart employees, "If you, we'll cut the check, but if you cash it, we'll fire you. So, w w which means he's so arrogant that he wants slave labor, even though slavery and not paying employees is illegal. That's how big and godlike these they CEOs are. what they can get away with. Now, we allow it. The uh, CEO of Nestle, little squinty, beady-eyed, uh, ugly little weasel, he, um, a celebrity of, who the hell was it, made a big stink about what he said about water. drinking water, uh, not, not, right. not being a right of people, it should be privatized and it's a privilege. Uh, well, he was called, they were called out on it and, um, Nestle's CEO says, oh, I'm only kidding. Oh, yeah, Aww. sure. Yeah, oh, he said it seriously when he made the statement. Yeah, but he didn't get away with it, so now he changes it. That's what they do. PR, baby. PR. Lying. Because they have to appear better than they appear when they get caught. Well, 
he he made his statement public, so I'm sure you can't get any more proof than that. But if if you go in the future, if you say, well, you know, it was a it was a, a, a comedy stunt. It was a I misspoke. Yeah, it was. I uh, misspoke. What about that thing up there last night uh, about Michelle Bachman said something? Yeah. And then they say that she didn't say it. Yeah, she uh, she, she made a statement like Ben Franklin was ben president. Ben Franklin was a president. Yeah. We got to go back to the days of when Ben Franklin was president. <laughs> but somebody in the uh, comment section said that she didn't say that. Was it a troll? Maybe it was a right wing could troll. Could be. Could be. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. She said a lot of crap. But I mean, she thinks that the, the in the Bible those red uh, sayings in the Bible there of Jesus, she believes he wrote them. <laughs> oh, God. oh man! Well, her and Sarah Palin have your rep have a reputation for saying many stupid things, stupid imbeciles. Hey, they're things. on Fox News. Yeah, they're more stupid than the blonde bombshells of Fox News. Okay, uh, Dr. Bill, um, we're all aware of um, Obamacare, of course, and. Uh, uh, even though it's privatized, uh, Republicans are still bashing it and complaining about it. And don't forget, it was a Republican thing in the first place, from the Heritage Foundation. Right. Okay. The the, the originally Obama wanted the single payer. Uh, we don't know Obama wanted it. We don't know if he wanted it. Thank okay. you. Uh, Probably because uh, if he probably wanted it, he could have got it in those two years. Yeah, in the first two years when yeah. the Democrats had control of Washington. Yeah. But uh, well, even though it, it's it's a big compromise with the right wing having it privatized, you know, Obamacare. Uh, I guess the, the right wing doesn't want to subsidize anything that helps we the people. Anything, mm -hmm. but they're still giving trillions of dollars or whatever billions to their rich friends in corporate subsidies mm -hmm. but you know with Obamacare some established doctors that are in you know more highfalutin neighborhoods there are some doctors that are refusing to accept Obamacare health insurance because it is connected in some way to Medicaid so they automatically assume they're going to get paid chicken feed like Medicaid. There's always a catch to helping the poor with the corrupt two-party system. Well, of course, you've got all those governors who aren't accepting it. At all, and like with Scott Walker? Yeah. In uh, Wisconsin? With Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, he, he won't, out of spite, he won't accept Mr. Obamacare. Mr. Da Perry in Texas. He won't accept it either. It's just despite Obama. Meanwhile, in, in Wisconsin, there's like 50,000 poor people that have no health coverage. Probably more than that. I'm sure it is more than that. Anytime uh, state and local government give you a percentage or a specified amount of individuals, it's usually not accurate. It's usually much higher. But uh, now, now listen to this. Hold on, please. Pollen count. I thought it would bother me yesterday, but no, it's bothering me today. <coughs> I took high vitamin C and the last Benadryl I had. But anyway. Excuse me. I was wondering you're not sleeping. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm a little drowsy. With Benadryl. But I'm not, you know, maybe later on. Okay. Last one. Uh, London, England, now is installing this uh, what they call uh, defensive architecture in their city by placing spikes uh, that will pop out of the cement of in alcoves and on park benches. These spikes that pop out of the cement or park benches are designed to drive the homeless away. 
to keep the homeless from under the bridges. Right to 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 drive them out of the city of London, mm -hmm. and I'm sure this will catch on in all of the red states and of the United States mm -hmm. very quickly, like North Carolina, etc. I'm sure this would catch blue on. Blue states like New Jersey. Yeah, so-called blue states who re-elected Chris Christie, but uh, they showed a park bench where, if you want to sit on it, I think it, at night you have to pay. Rent the bench. Rent the park bench. So, whether you have to pay or not, the point is, they design alcoves or you know, areas where, where homeless people could put their box and sleep, and park benches with spikes that pop up. And uh, the point is, it's it's the capitalist. Point. It's the capitalist society that created the poverty, which creates the homeless. Yeah. So they want to they want to sweep the poor. They want to sweep poverty under the carpet and pretend it doesn't exist by just driving the homeless out of the city of London. Yeah. Let it be somebody else's problem. Yeah. Besides, they're all lazy anyway. Oh, you mean the homeless? Yeah. They're all lazy. That's why they arrest them some some areas for vagrancy. Yeah. Yeah, there's a story about a, a vet sitting on a bench, right? And they uh, arrest him for loitering or vagrancy or whatever yeah. the hell it is. This, this is how it is. You know, a Garfield, New Jersey cop told me one time they arrest uh, oh, if uh, a homeless person, which, if you're a Republican, is is a, a bum or a hobo or whatever, is if they're sleeping on the park bench. They will arrest them for vagrancy uh, because the government the government feels you should be working. You should be working. You should be helping those corporations out by getting a crap job for them. And getting paid next to nothing. Yeah. Helping helping the corporations that are the job creators. Yeah. Meanwhile the jobs are in mainland China. Yeah, well they're creating jobs. <coughs> for being honest about that. Well, you know, what you we can call them jobs. What, actually, they, no. they should be translated as slavery. Well, actually. a Chinese friend from Shanghai told me that the media, when it gets to the United States from China, doesn't tell you that the Chinese people are starting to get pretty pissed off with their system and, ah. and that they have there. And, their well, they should and and the Japanese are very angry at their government for also like lying to them uh, Fukushima Fukushima yeah still poisoning the Pacific Ocean so uh, that's the deal Shlomil. Shlomil. so now um, let us sink our teeth into these readings for Father's Day weekend of 2014 Put my glasses on here. Yep. Oh, I'm hearing more stories about um, cannabis juice and extract working wonders for cancer patients. They gave it to a little baby that had cancer and it's working miraculously. Wow. But what I'm afraid of is the story I heard that, you know, uh, Monsanto wants to bring in its uh, GMO genetically modified cannabis. Well, yes, of course. What else is new, right? Yeah. What is the difference between sea salt and table salt? Oh, big difference. Also, I've heard that sea salt is healthier. Is this true? Absolutely. Answer. Sea salt is produced through the evaporation of seawater in various ways. For example, that would be fleur de sel is scraped from the surface of the evaporation ponds. Mm -hmm. It contains trace minerals yes. that may add flavor or color. And nutritional value. And its coarseness varies from the product to product. In contrast, table salt is typically mined from salt deposits underground. 
and process to remove the trace minerals, also known as impurities, the salt is then ground so that its texture is uniformly fine and it mixes evenly. The most significant difference between sea salt and table salt is that table salt is usually iodized, a health measure governments worldwide have undertaken to combat iodine deficiency, which can result in stunted physical and mental growth in children and goiters in adults. Zinc deficiency too? Once very common in the United States. In that sense, table salt is healthier. Otherwise, the two kinds are about the same. No, the, the, no, no, no. The, the, this person obviously has not really studied uh, this, the natural salts of the earth to make that statement. Well, she only made it at court, uh, 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 in, uh, in, in, in regard to the iodine. Well, that's why she considered it healthier. Pure processed. Otherwise, they're the same. Processed mined table salt is pure sodium chloride with or without iodine added to it. Right. Now, once you add the iodine, right, it becomes healthier, she said. Pure processed 100% sodium chloride or any processed salt is white. Natural salt that is high in healthful trace minerals is not white. It is a uh, uh, pinkish or grayish color, different shades of that. It, it has color to it. And uh, you can either get it by buying uh, a good quality uh, sea salt. You know, usually uh, a lot of them come from the Mediterranean and from the dehydrated water there because the Mediterranean has higher salinity than the other oceans. Or you can get it from a prehistoric bed like uh, the Great Salt Lake area of uh, Utah. Uh, or what I take is pink Himalayan salt, which is an ancient prehistoric seabed. And the salt is actually pink. Himalayan pink salt. It, it's very important to, uh, to health. Uh, to ingest these uh, trace minerals and uh, that's the real story about the uh, salt okay so the economic development authority this is in regard to New Jersey right I believe once again granted an obscene tax break of a hundred and five point five million dollars to bolster Governor Christie's bona fides with his fellow supply side trickle down ideologues. P pistle down is more like it. The record, that's our local newspaper, sees fit to share this only on the business page. Meanwhile, the same day, there was a teaser about Standard & Poor, again, reacting to the economic rot Governor Christie wreaks on the state coffers. The action by the EDA belongs side by side on page one with the budget mess. The EDA program has awarded more than $800 million in tax credits in fiscal 2013, which is more than the amount the governor is shorting the pension fund. Yeah, so he can give more money to his rich friends. Well, this time he couldn't get away with a tax cut, so this is how he's doing it. Let's see. They want grants and subsidies they need and raises. So the, the rich today need more of a tax cut? Yes, they do. Than they already have? They are blessed by God, and they need it all. That's because they say so. That's correct. Couldn't we disabuse ourselves of this man's dogma and deal with facts and evidence? 
EDA programs do not pay for themselves in imaginary revenues in spite of the governor's campaign promises. And if he still maintains that stance, he must prove it. He can't. When Ronald Reagan pitched his supply-side trickle-down theories, George H.W. Bush called them voodoo economics. And he was right. The economy trickles up. It's 33 years later, and Christie still clings to this gospel all evidence to the contrary and so does the record when it prints this news in the back page hold your finger where you where you left off there is no trickle down economics it's a lie it wasn't meant to be it wasn't meant to work what you have is siphon up economics to the rich wealthiest one percent Everything is siphoned up. There is no trickle down. Or pistol, pistol on, pistol down. This is a siphon, by the way. Siphon up economics is what we really have in the devil's economics of crony capitalism. Continue. The record has reported on Governor Christie's backpedaling and bullying of public servants. It's time for someone to manage the state's finances and to make the unpopular but correct decision to fund the pension system and head it back to solvency where it was before the state started to juggle the books at the expense of its own employees. Right. I do not think People in New Jersey want to hurt their employees. This governor is more worried about his political future than having the courage to make the tough choices necessary to resolve many of the state's problems. I cite the recent and very lucrative raises to his own staff. The state budget shortfall and not taking responsibility for what transpired in the George Washington Bridge lane closures. That's our governor. And he got re-elected. In, in a blue state of New Jersey, he got re-elected. You figure. I have no idea what happened. Democrats turning their back on Barbara Bono, who's, uh, who's extremely in intelligent and impressive, and, and beat Chris Christie in the two debates. By hands down, she beat him. I have no idea how he got reelected. <laughs> I don't even hear anything about her anymore. She still has a Facebook page. Big deal. Yeah, was she a state a state a senator or st she works in Trenton? Right? Yeah. A little, uh, a little of a side here. You know, the serious stuff. Is. Yeah. We'll go on to a little, uh. I know an, a killer asteroid came close to the Earth uh, last uh, Sunday. We could have been dead! Too bad it can't. Nobody told me! Too bad we can't put all. Republicans in the state of Texas and have the asteroid uh, hit Texas only. Not Austin, though. Don't hit Austin. Austin. No, I want to. I want to take all the progressives out of Texas and then, uh, you know. Uh, no, I don't know how you do that. I don't know. It's, it's just a stupid fantasy. <laughs> a while ago, I found that my wife was texting a co-worker. Mail? She does not delete anything off her phone. But she did delete these texts to this guy who is younger and single. Oh boy. Wow! Cougar! 
she's a cougar. <laughs> she's she's not. Uh, something is lacking at home, maybe. Making it very suspicious. This caused a major rift in our relationship, and I'm slowly getting over it. They were in frequent communication across various avenues. Words with friends. Calls on their cell phones, Facebook, etc. Right. But now they have ceased all communication. But first of all, a girlfriend or husband, spouse, whatever, should not be snooping and spying and, and hacking into their significant other's accounts. You know what I mean? I mean, that's wrong also. They are no longer Facebook friends. No more games on their phones. She had a cease and desist. No cell phone calls, nothing. I know that they talk frequently at work. But the lack of any communication that I can see and the change in what they used to do makes me suspicious. I feel like they're being sneaky but about this relationship. Yeah, well he's, he's also sneaky for reading your uh, cell phone. And that continues to eat at me. Am I overreacting for being suspicious about this? No. No, not really. Anytime I bring it up to my wife, she minimizes their relationship. Tries to make it seem like less than it is. Ah, he's just a male friend. I, I, I work with him. Ah, he's just a male friend. Yeah, she'll, of course, she's going to say that. She'll leave out details until I press for more. Yeah, but what is he going to do? Press for more every day? Better put her down day? in a chair and strap her in and put a light on her face and interrogate her. What about the truth serum? What is that? Uh, Ooh, sodium pentothal. Sodium pentothal. The truth serum. Answer. You were suspicious when your wife and this guy were in touch. Now that they are not in touch, you are still suspicious. This reveals an insidious issue in your marriage. You and your wife are circling each other when you should be driving through the heart of this. The best way to do this is with a seasoned marriage counselor. Seasons? What kind of older Cajun one. seasoning? Or? Older one, I guess. Oh, okay. You need clarity to tamp down your suspicions. And she needs to be honest and completely transparent about this other relationship. Oh boy. Now put on your uh, marriage counselor hat. I don't know what to tell and, them. It's a, you know, it's like answer uh, the question. It's like people that have issues with uh, like online dating or even like Facebook issues and first of all, a person that creates a profile, an account can lie profusely about anything and everything. Their photos could be phony. Yeah, but these people or work old together. photos, huh? These people work together. Well, she they could say anything day. to her husband. She could say, you know, well, they ah, see we each just... other at, at work every day. So there's no phoniness in, in that sense. No. You know, you know, what is he gonna do? He's gonna like bug the office. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's it's his word against hers. And, uh, and it's up to her ultimately. If she's going to cheat, she's going to cheat, and if she's not, she's not going to. So if there's know. a will, there's a way. Yeah, is what you're saying. So what is he going to do about it in the end? With his suspicions. Look, they can cease and desist with all the texting, but if there's a will, there's a way. If they want to, if they want to, if she wants to cheat with him with, or whoever, if she wanted to. She can do it. It's just... Uh, Nothing he's going to do is going to stop. Yeah, now, if his wife spends a lot of quality, 
quality time with her husband, with him, that's a good sign. Because if she's spending a lot of time with her husband when, he, when they're not working, then of course she's not with anybody else. But when you get a person who's insanely jealous, even though your significant other, 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 significant other, those are the cows up in Wisconsin, the dairy cows, significant other, it, you know, it, they, they logically can't be cheating if they're with you with, with all her leisure time, you know, when she's off work. When she's with her husband, then, you know, that proves that they are just co-workers and friends. On to another subject. Right. Atheists use their venom on Christianity. There's a lot of Christians, uh, so-called Christians, that have venom too. The right-wing evangelicals. Ooh, those counterfeit Christians have a lot of venom. Fundamentalists. A lot of like venom. Like that, that uh, photograph I saw of one of the uh, one of the Al Qaeda uh, or Taliban hostages that was released. His Supposedly. method. His method of torture is. Uh, cut off your head. He was cutting the heads of the so-called infidels off with a steak knife. Yeah. And they showed a picture of him holding up a bloody steak knife with a whole bunch of heads in front of him yeah. on, the, on the floor. We don't know that that's true though because I, I have not seen that mentioned anywhere. You know how many... Anywhere. You know how many photos are posted on, on Facebook and the internet that are, are altered or photoshopped? God bless showed a photoshop. Okay? Somebody uh, uh, debunked the, uh, the photo of the 11 pound bullfrog. Well, what the hell? I thought that was true. Found in a ditch. Yeah, now, but, but you can't always, you can't always believe the debunkers either because, listen, everybody has to stick their two cents in on the internet. Can't believe anything on the internet. You can't believe anything. I mean, people will come up with cockamamie advi uh, uh, proof to show you that you're wrong because they want to be right and you know they'll, they'll criticize they'll ridicule they'll correct you but sometimes they're correct they're right about it their correction and sometimes they're talking out of their ass and sometimes the photo really is phony you could tell but you can't always tell you see like that UFO video from the uh, Russians that looked very real yeah you know, but then you have non-believers that would say, no, it's a fake, everything's a fake, I don't believe nothing. Usually these people don't, are not members of Holistic Health Talk, because they don't even believe the uh, the proven information against Big Pharma. Uh, and, 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 the, and, what, uh, and supporting nutrition. When you criticize the big corporation, they take it as uh, traitorous. You're being unpatriotic. You're, unpa you're being traitor. You're being a traitor because you don't want to yeah. be a sucker for a corporation. Exactly. A victim. Exactly. Because the mindset of Americans is such that you know, well, the corporations provide us with our jobs. Why should I have? Why they should we? They don't take it to the next level, though. They provide us with our survival, and therein lies the problem. If you're if you're working. All right, providing your services, and you're working long hours, let's say, or whatever, for very little pay for a corporation. There's no incentive for you to be loyal and speak nicely about that corporation. Like with Walmart, there's no incentive to have a positive attitude about Walmart if you're one of the employees. Well, gee whiz, they had a commercial on a while ago with employees on their... Uh Extolling the virtues of Walmart. They're paid. No, but this there has to be an incentive for people to yeah. roll out of bed and work for a company. There has to be incentives there, and uh, to speak nicely and lie about a company that is scum. And 
It seems like corporate America is run by scumbags. Yeah, but the, 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 the problem is, the, as I keep pointing out, it's even bigger than that. The problem is with the economic system that we have, wherein an employee will never be paid what he's worth. You know? An employer can't do that. You have to make more than you're worth to him. Or you're going to be out on your ass. That's the problem with the system, not an individual corporation or CEO. That's the system. So having a job doesn't necessarily mean, well, quite often it doesn't mean that your life will improve, that your standard of living will improve. It simply means that you're just a pawn in, in, the, in their greed. Of course. Of their corporate greed. You're, you're, you're a of course. And we have allowed them that Lemming. power. Yeah. Because as I point out again, every single corporation who does a bad thing, their charter can be revoked. And the employees can take over. How about that? I still haven't and who's seen... Who's going to do that? Who has the balls to do that? Nobody who's getting a, 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 a bribe from them. No one. Citizens United, McCutcheon versus FEC. Okay? Unfortunately... You give them even more. Unfortunately, there's not too many Bernie Sanders around. Or Elizabeth Warrens. Or Chuck Schumer's. Yeah, Chuck Schumer's. Uh, uh, Chuck Schumer. Okay? It's all a problem. As long as they receive money from those who have the money. They're beholden to them. That's correct. It's bribery. Pure and simple. Now, Vermont just passed a law that uh, I didn't read it in detail because I, I, I was in a hurry to get here. Um, but Vermont just passed a law that would take money out of politics in Vermont. Yeah, in Vermont. So I'm not sure. They, they mentioned the name of what it was, but I have to investigate it further. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I did post it on the group, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Facebook group. Back to the atheists who use their venom on Christianity in an effort to drive religion out of the public square. It should, it should be driven out of uh, public areas where taxpayers' money is spent. But they do more. Often mocking, denigrating, and ridiculing all religion. So they behave very similarly to the right-wing religious nuts that will persecute others that are not like them. So the, the atheists have become like the cultists of evangelicals. I don't see the atheists acting in those ways at all. I, I, you know, I all don't they do is say, yeah. you believe myths. That's all they do. And don't, and don't pressure me and, and, and force your beliefs on me. I never have seen militant no. atheists never. that go out and bother you. Never. Remember the Harry Krishnas? Yeah. At when the you're standing at the, on the, in the airport there, the airport. minding your own damn business, and they come in your face. Yeah, and they look like the guy. The men look like Boy George. You know. Well, that's how the uh, evangelicals are. Uh, JWs, etc. They're always in your face. You know, they got the answers and they're in your face. During the Christmas holidays, atheist groups paid out to put up giant highway billboards in northern New Jersey saying, you know it's a myth and you have a choice. Referring to the Christmas narrative. This is tantamount to hate speech. See? They liken their struggle 
after the gay rights movement and asking atheists to come out of the closet. They forget that it was Christianity above all else that literally shaped Western civilization. Now what Christianity is they referring to? But the Roman Catholic Church. Boy, it really shaped Western civilization, didn't it? Um, yeah, I'm sure the native uh, indigenous peoples throughout the world are very happy about them, along with the European colonists. I also had to wonder which atheist leader has the moral authority that the Pope has? He just brought together Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and Israeli President Shimon Peres. Not only to pray together with the pontiff, but also to embrace and hold private peace talks at the Vatican. Whoever does not quote verbatim of the Bible it is not a true Christian. They are not a true Christian. Secular governments. A true Christian is one who follows Jesus. Period. And 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 and, and is accurate with the Bible. It doesn't matter. If you're following Jesus, you're going to be accurate with the Bible. The definition of a Christian is one who follows Jesus. Right. Period. Secular governments have failed to accomplish peace in the Middle East over and over again. Perhaps the atheists can put up some billboards in hopes of bringing peace to the Middle East. I saw another photograph of a, a, a little Palestinian girl that was killed mm -hmm. by, uh, from an airstrike, I guess co collateral damage, from as they like to call it. So uh, I don't see it. I don't see it happening, Dr. Bill. It ain't going to happen because World War Three begins there. Peace in the Middle East, yeah. Maybe the... Uh, King of the North the, and King of the South. The problem in the uh, Ukraine is leading into that beginning of World War III. You don't Nothing think do you it. don't think they're connected at all? No, 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 no. But they're they're not far apart. No, they ain't have nothing to but do with each other. But there's other countries there. It doesn't matter. The Holy Roman Empire is not there yet. Okay. These things have nothing to do with World War III. You have to have the Holy Roman Empire resurrected for the seventh time. Which Going over to the Middle East and kicking the shit out of the yeah. King of the South. Which will be the uh, European Union possibly with the Roman Catholic Church. Not possibly, that's it. You don't it's think... It's risen six times before. What do you think it was? Some but you, some alien thing from outer space? So you... you with the Holy Roman Empire? So even though corporate America has become very wicked, very evil and greedy and... and, and interferes in, wor in worldwide affairs, you, th you feel that by the time this happens, the United States will be so weak that they, they could not be uh, considered any, uh, to be any tool of Satan in the, in the uh, end time. The United States government. The United States. The, the modern day descendants of ancient Israel will all fall at the same time. All, all the After tribes? the king of the north kicks the shit out of the king of the south in the Middle East, they will turn on Israel and the United States and Great Britain, etc., etc. So uh, the king they will of all the king of the south, you called, you said, might be is a uh, radical Islam. Radical Islam, probably led by Iran. Right. Yeah. Now, now, is there a king of the east called Gog and Magog? We don't need to worry about them. That's at a later time. That's correct. Okay. That's the 200 million man army. Wow. Uh -huh. Which can only be brought together by the Asian countries. Asian hordes, yeah. Asian hordes. They're the only ones who have those populations. Boy, I smell people barbecuing uh, this Father's Day. I think that's me. Oh, that's you. <laughs> All right. I think that's my gastronomic, uh, whatever. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's that time already. Almost. No, you got about seven menus. Good, good, goo, goo, goo. 
All we have right. time for one more yeah, not long. change of pace. Toothpaste? What? Change of pace. Oh, change of pace. Pace! Somebody was advertising bamboo toothbrushes. Hmm. The, hand, the handles are bamboo. Uh, I was going to say, you know, I, that was pre that's pretty rough on your teeth. If it was the bristles. Mm. Ah, get, 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 get. The bristles. Me bristles. I am a twice divorced woman. Mm, it's not uncommon. Who found my present husband late in life. I'm in my early 60s. Yay. My husband is in his 70s. Oh my God. He's got one foot on a banana peel and one, one foot in the grave. grave. We married quickly because I didn't want to be alone in life. And I thought I loved him. Mm, you know, they have issues too, senior couples. They wouldn't be writing to Amy Dickinson if they didn't have issues. <laughs> Angie, Angie Dickinson? Amy! Oh, Amy. My husband works while I stay home because of a medical condition. Uh, figures. Because I get bored, I spend some of my time communicating with and texting male friends really? from the past. Ah, so this woman is, uh... And... She's an old cougar. One of my ex-husbands. Huh? Oh, really? She we have fun texting. She probably puts all kinds of trivial, everyday occurrences on Facebook and, uh... You know, small talk, gossip. It's the kind of talk that bores me. And sometimes it goes beyond... Well, I don't want to see or think about these people doing it. Just like I... I well, you certainly put up that uh, video last night of the woman getting done by the dog. She, there was no penetration. Uh, she had her clothes on. I, mean, I know, the, but the, still the dog, at all. The dog that was humping her? Yeah. It was funny. It was funny. It's a male dog that wasn't fixed yet. He hasn't been neutered. He, Obviously. He got this old, old woman on the floor for the Latin Ro America. Rolling her around and then ended up in position though. <laughs> yeah. But uh... The other woman is just laughing her ass off. Yeah, somebody's posting a photo of this very young man with a... Uh, very old lady uh, making out and uh, claiming they're in love and the tongues are sticking out and it nauseated me. I had I didn't a, see it. I had to change the page. I realize I am married and my ex is engaged. But how harmful can this be? I don't drink. I don't think, excuse me. I don't think I'm hurting anyone. And it helps the day go by. I mean, the open communication between the men of her past and herself. Not that she's attempting to have an affair. Is this considered cheating? I don't think it is. Because my ex and I live in different states, and the chances of us ever getting together again are slim to none. But to a, 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 a crazed, jealous person, they can call everything cheating. Texting, cheat. Uh, uh, email, cheat. Uh, 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 Skype, a video call, cheat. Did everything is cheat? Uh, as an aside, did you see that video the other day where uh, no, it wasn't a video. I guess it was a picture or something. Uh, in a mall, and this guy, he met his online girlfriend for the first time, and she was so ugly he jumped down four floors. Holy shit. No, up on I, the I ground. didn't see that. I don't know if he, he was should have dead or what. He should have posted it on the... On the someone else posted On the nothing group. You know? You, you posted something that was good. Uh, you mean to tell me after all this time he didn't know what she looked like? You know what? He's giving him a bad picture or People something? are so stupid. <laughs> all you have to do to verify somebody from the internet or online dating is to insist that you communicate with them via Skype. From, from webcam because you yeah. want to see them who they really are. You want to see them talk, 
and, and how they look because people can use someone else's photo yeah. or let's say the woman is older let's say she's old and she uses a, photo, a yellowish old photo of her when she was young or sometimes women uh, use photos where they're way off in the background and sometimes you only see their head you don't see the rest of their body so yeah. they could be very well, fat yeah. obese you know dishonest photos but they can't lie when you get them on video get them on Skype Answer. Yes. This isn't harmless fun. It's a threat to your marriage. Whether I consider it cheating is beside the point. Whether your husband and your ex-fiance would consider it cheating is the question. If they got wind of your pastime, I suspect both would be hurt, angry, and feel violated. Not only that, you could lose husband number three! Yeah. True. True. Well, human, um, human psychology, very complex. I can never be a shrink. I would have a massive headache every day trying to <laughs> understand people. You know, and the things they do. Um, but I posted a video of uh, in the Philippines they they massaged by giant pythons. They snake massage. They they put the snakes on top of you and the snakes, you know, crawl around on you. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, they make sure you don't get constricted because the Burmese pythons will do it. But uh, anyway, it is time for the uh, the Reverend Doctor William J Eisenman's uh, gastronomic delight, known as lunch. Uh, followed by myself visiting a William H. Morrow III, our a voiceover artist, followed by our commercial, our promo. And we'll be back with the, uh, the balance of the show on Father's Day 2014. I am your Faja. I am your Faja. Okay, I'm here with William H. Moore of the Third. You know, in the news today, I read an article. Um, the um, a Waffle House in North Carolina refused to give one of their waitresses her one thousand dollars in tips. They actually s withheld and stole her tip money because they simply felt like doing it. And I guess she's taking them to court. Uh, now, well, I don't, well, first of all, let me interrupt. How do they steal her tip money? Is it they is just re they, is it pooled and? Or did they pick up from the tables and where the money was I, left for her? I think they they told her that she couldn't keep it. They they, they demanded to see her tips. This is not right. That's to me, it's stealing of. That's why she got. She it's has robbery. Well, it's that's theft. that's why she has a waitress job. They don't pay much. At, at, what is it? Two dollars and change well, an hour. I don't know what it is down there, but up here it's a little over two dollars, like two fifteen, two twenty five. Right. So, at which I don't understand. Why don't waitresses fall to at least the minimum wage? Minimum too? wage. Now, my feeling yeah, is so. now Mario Battaglia was stealing tips from his wine servers. He was caught. And this is a rich, famous guy from the Food Channel. And he's stealing too. Mario Battaglia from his from his right because well. it's his restaurant. He feels he has. Oh, a, oh, oh no! But that doesn't give you the right to no. do that. It's your restaurant too, so I don't have to pay taxes. Right, exactly. Uh, what do you mean? It's my restaurant. You have certain guidelines. You have certain ethics and morals. You don't screw people. You don't cheat people. You work with your people. He's got these people, these guy, guys, guys and women. Right. They're doing just the opposite of what is morally and ethically correct or incorrect. Well, that's why they got the job, to get tips. 
I mean, to, that's how they make their money on, on the took a thousand plus dollars from this board. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an article. It's in detail too. I, uh, it's in. But North Carolina is a Republican state, which. Well, that Jimmy, I'm sorry, that doesn't matter. Well, no, they they like to deregulate all businesses. No, regu- uh, 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 Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. You're stealing somebody's tips. True. That's true. the bottom line. It doesn't matter what yeah. side of the of the. Uh, well, deregulation means uh, you can do any damn thing you want without without no, getting in trouble. No, you can't. But but that's not right. That's not the word works. You don't steal from yeah. people. Now, my my hunch is can I that. You real quick? Go ahead. Go Did ahead. they steal from anybody else in that restaurant? Has anybody else come forward too as well? Maybe they some. They took pe- my tips too. You know what? It's very well, it's very possible. Maybe they're afraid to come forward. I doubt it can be just this one person, this one girl. Right. Well, I would may- imagine it had to be has to be has to be more. It's got to be. Yeah. Or maybe they're afraid so, to come forth. Well, maybe they will now too. What is she doing? By the way, oh, she she's taking legal. Uh, she's taking legal action. Legal action, yes, she is. Good, good, good for her. Good for All her. Right. Now, my hunch is that the the system of pooling tips. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in it no. because that mean not only does that mean a real bad waiter or waitress. I'm busting. Let me interrupt you again. I'm busting my hump all night. You're slacking because you know you get the same amount or vice versa right. or whatever. It doesn't matter. So why be a good no. waiter, right? I do not. I believe in pulling tips. I believe you work for your tips. As my father always told me, tips should not be expected. They should be earned. That's why they're called a gratuity. Yeah, and dad and me were always, my whole family, great tippers. 20% easily. Well, okay. And a lot of times yeah. over 20% because he'd yeah. rather off of the next dollar or two or three. Yeah. And well, the, she did a good job. Well, the word this. the word gratuity means yeah. comes from the word gratitude. You earn it, not expect You earned it. it. Right, exactly. If, if I walk out of you, you're an absolute snot. You're slow. You, you're just horrible. You don't come to the why table. Should I, why should I uh, yeah. tip you? And I've got to be honest. I don't think I've ever had a bad waiter or waitress. In my well, life. I've had, you know, in diners, in not. diners. I have not. I'll be honest. I've always been fortunate, and I've always tipped them well. You never had. I, I honestly, I cannot remember ever having a bad. You one. never had a waitress that came, no. to, came to take the order, brought the food, and never showed up again, yeah, uh, no. except for the bill. I swear, I swear on my mom and dad. You know, I love my parents. I've always, everywhere I've gone, in state, out of state, blah blah blah. I've never. I've been fortunate, I guess. I I cannot complain. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, but I've had friends like you and yourself and others yeah. that have had nightmare stories uh, where the food was horrible, was cold, undercooked, or blah blah blah. No, I never have. I'll yeah. be honest with you. But. Well, a gratuity, uh, being being able to keep your gratuities, is an incentive to be a better waiter or waitress. I mean, it's only fair. I mean, it's only it's only common sense. Well, you know? the bottom line too is being a professional. And I have asked a lot of my friends who are waiters and waitresses, have you ever gotten stiffed and blah, blah, blah. And they've gotten screwed pretty big time. Like, yeah. like 100 plus or $200 bill, and they only leave wow. three, four, five dollars. The bottom line is hold yourself to a higher standard. Well, that's why they passed that law. Just do that, that rule, if, if a table is a party of five or, or more, like if you have several people at a table, it is a mandatory tip added. Some well, restaurants do that. That is a low now. If, if where? A, in Jersey if, or where? Well, in Jersey, like you'll see on, on a menu, if if there's a party of like five or more, the tip is included in, to prevent a poor waiter or waitress from getting stiffed. I mean, it's a lot of work to serve seven people. Seven? Well, I could tell you a story, boss. My friends at a suburban diner, when I was sitting there, yeah. when I used to go for coffee, 4, 4.30 in the morning, out of the blue, because at that hour, you have a skeleton staff. Right. You have one waitress, Teddy was the manager then, and one or two cooks in the kitchen. Graveyard And shift, a yeah. bus pulled in with 50 plus people. Wow. And they got the job done. Wow. They did a great job. They hustled their you know what stuff. Well, they didn't expect so, a party that large to come they in. They didn't know. It was a bus touring figure. There's yeah. a big sign, diner, 24 hours. It's the only place on the highway that's open. And all of a sudden, these people come pouring in. And they even had, they were nice. Yeah. They said, can you handle all of us? We have 50 plus people here. They were nice they about it. They said, come on in. We'll take care of you. Sure. Well, and they did it. I would have said the same thing. And know? I sat there and I watched. And they did a top-notch job. So 
Uh, so for anybody in this area of New yeah. Jersey, North Jersey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Suburban Diner and Parabas people, okay? Let's give a little plug well, that's, here, that's, okay? That's optimum service, in my opinion. That's uh, impeccable they went service. They above and beyond. Even Teddy raved about his, his cook, uh, uh, Mario. I said, how'd he do it? Because Billy, he did phenomenal. He didn't lose a beat. He had everything ready and he going. I said, good for him. And I told him later, I said, I said, oh, I'm not Mar Max, Max. I'm sorry, I said Mario. So uh, the next day I said, Max, I hear you did a great job, boy. He beamed. You know, I said, let me shake your hand, buddy. But anyway, continue. Well, my hunch, my, my gut feeling is that pooling tips does one more thing that's bad. I think it allows the restaurant owner to, to skim off the top and steal some a percentage of that tip money from his em employees. If well, you want it's very to. possible. But the, the, the main thing is you're rewarding bad service yeah. and taking away from great service. Or good exactly. Service. That's the bottom. You're not right. penalizing the ba the bad people you know, that don't want to. I busted my hump. You didn't do squat, Jimmy, for example. You're getting the same as me. I, this really isn't fair. There's no incentive. Yeah. There's no incentive to yeah. be a better waiter. Well, then, then for that matter, then why why do waiters and waitresses argue about their stations? They argue with the, the, mate, the maitre d' or the hostess or host. You know, I need more people on my station. Send more people over to me. Or rotate. Yeah. Well, rotate they do. Stations. They do with the, during the week. But it's like you know, I've only got three tables. So and so has got six tables over here. You know, it's it's what's fair is fair. You don't yeah. split. You try to equal it. Say, yeah. you over here, let me seat you over here, let me seat you here. I mean, I flat out refuse to give up my gratuities. My gratuities is, 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 are fruits of my labor. If I was a waiter, it's, it's what I've earned, like you said. Earned. Uh, a gratuity or tip yeah. is earned, yeah. not expected. Right. Yeah. Now, Mario Batali is proof that a restaurant owner can steal from pool tips that have been pooled. Just, just he, he takes the money and he tells the the staff, "Well, we only have two hundred dollars in in tips to 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 uh, divide." And in reality, there could be five hundred dollars in tips. He could lie. He could lie to his staff. This was in his restaurant. Well, he was he was taking from the wine servers in his restaurant in Manhattan. But it was his restaurant. Yes, yes, sir. So he's a wealthy man already. Yes. He's, he has to resort to this. And famous, yeah. Well, he's a fine individual. Yeah, some guy told me, "Oh, don't don't say anything. You, Mario Batali will get will get will get very angry." I says, "Why? That people should go on and, and and be allowed to steal from their employees." If nobody says anything and nobody ever complains, England would still own the United well, what's States. What's wrong with the tip thing or jar anywhere? You don't see them in the, any fast food places. No. And nobody has to put anything in. No. It's there if you want to, but you have all this thing for the McDonald's, uh, for the handicapped kids or whatever. And who knows what percentage of that is going to the handicapped kids? Uh, sadly, I heard it's about 5%. Oh, the so-called administrative No, fees. McDonald House or whatever it's called, I heard it's very, yeah. very minimal. I, I heard that about a couple months ago, and I was I was very shocked. Yeah. Now, so, uh, here is, well, that's another talk show, because we, we've done topics about uh, dishonest charities before. But here's a subject that's near and dear to our hearts, the cockles of our hearts, whatever the hell that means. Uh, the um, social services system. That gentleman that we interviewed. How much? How much back food stamps does, does, does the state of New Jersey owe him now? He's going on a six month now. You gotta be kidding me! Six months. Six, six months of not really being able to buy food per se. And and he was getting. He lives on. In the beginning of each month, he buys a few cans of chili and this, and that, and some crackers. Yeah. Or whatever. So, so he he told he told us what was that? He was getting thirty dollars a week. Well, it was one twenty the month. So that's the 30, month. that is thirty dollars a week. Okay, yes, that's what it comes down to. And and their reasoning is that there was a glitch. Uh, if it was me, if it was you, would you live on thirty dollars of food a week? No. Look at the price of cold cuts. I love cold cuts. If I bought a pound of roast beef or turkey, or whatever, you're, or ham, you're talking smoked eleven, ham. twelve dollars easily. Yeah. Okay. Even if it's a cheaper brand, eight ninety nine. That's a big chunk. Yeah. You and my mother are big fans of cold cuts. I am. Liverwurst. Yeah. You you name it. I love all that stuff. All that stuff. And this friend of ours, we're not going to name his name, but uh, how do you live on that? Yeah. 
Well, even at the at the uh, Polish or German store, the, the Polish store I go to, where they make freshly made cold cuts on the premises, the prices are not cheap. Nothing is cheap anymore. Nothing is cheap anymore. Your best buy is certain stores. And I guess it's okay to name the name, like Stop and Shop, for example. Have ten for ten. Yeah. Ten is canned items. Ten cans for ten dollars. That's fairly well, reasonable. Hey. But that's what some of these people have to live on. National Wholesale Liquidators has uh, a company called Windmill Vitamins. It's buy one get one free every day. Well, then again, though, you better watch your brand. Well, oh, you got to read it. You got to read it. Yeah. Well, they can print anything, though, Jeremy. You don't know. Well, they then, can say anything. Well, anybody can do it. Well, Twin Lab can do it if they and wanted and to. And they have been. I've heard the quality has gone. Well, down. the vitamin shop was caught. And the vitamin shop just bought, made a purchase today of a, of a vitamin manufacturer. It was in the paper. Really? Yeah. Well, they were getting uh, uh, their vitamins from Phoenix Labs, and what happened was somebody brought it to. A uh, independent and assay it laboratory. And it was stems and twigs. Well, the the soft palmetto berry, the dosage that was on the bottle was was far more than what was actually in the bottle. I don't know why companies do this. If it was my company, I maybe I would charge you a little more. But I would say you may pay a little bit more. Well, that You're destroys so much more. But well, that destroys your reputation. Build a great reputation where people trust you. Ask me if I would, if I had the money, would I ever buy a Toyota? My answer is no. Why? Because of the the, the, the terrible recalls that well, took place. Well, they're all having recalls nowadays. You just said recently GM has had 19, I think, the past year or so. That's right. You've had Ford just had one. Ford had uh, one. Yeah. They're all having them. It's Honda like. really never had one. They had some smaller recalls, not yeah. major. But Nissan get, had one. Oh, really? Uh, I haven't heard of any of the. the I'm not sure if BMW did or not, or Audi, I'm not sure. Well, a guy I used to work for, he had a new BMW, and he says he'll never buy another Beamer again. He says this BMW is always in the shop. Really? And always in the garage, which I'm shocked. Now, now Volkswagen products are very well made. Uh, Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen, all the same. Very good quality. Now, getting back to that man who's being penalized from a, a state glitch. Now, you know, it reminds me of when I went to Motor Vehicles uh, the end of last week to renew my driver's license. And there was a long line wrapped around the building. Why? Because there's a statewide, the, 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 um, the state of New Jersey uh, web, uh, what do you call it, database, the website was down. Yeah. So they penalize us or these people or what right. have you, and you've got to come back and reapply. I did nothing wrong. Why should them. you take a ticket? Why should and I have wait? to go back in? Because you messed up. Why not send a letter out saying we have it reinstituted or whatever, blah blah blah, and here's your your retroactive blah blah blah. That man's information is still in the system. Why must he reapply? Oh, well, and also the file is still on file. Right, same information. So why why does he have to come in and go through the whole spiel again? His income or <coughs> lack of. Where do you, are you where still he the lives. same address? Are you, do you still have the same phone number? Actually, fill this, this form out. Blah, actually, blah, blah, blah. actually, his social should bring up his whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And technically. They're doing this to discourage a lot of people. Get, and it does discourage a lot to, of people. To get people not to reapply. If it was me, I wouldn't go back. I would say, I, as hard as things are, as times are for most of us, yeah. I could use it, but I don't need the $30 a week. I, I can't be bothered. Why, why let these scoundrels win, win, though? Why because let them you win? you know what? You're going to do it again. You've done it once, you'll do it again, Oops. you'll do it again, you'll always blame it on the almighty glitch. The almighty glitch. Oh, completely. You've got to come in and reapply. Just like a CEO blames it on the stockholders, I, shareholders. I told our buddy, don't bother. Don't bother. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Not worth the aggravation of grief. It's going to give you ulcers. But this, yeah, this is what you explained to the man. Yeah. Now, uh, it's really a shame that underhanded tactics have to take place all the time in America with American politics and it's just become so corrupt the two-party system anything to hurt people yeah hurt people that really need help meanwhile oh, you mean you're not you don't mean our veterans administration do you uh, there's one example but guess what uh, congressmen and senators they voted their um, their pensions are very healthy and hefty 
okay, there's nothing cut when it comes to congressman and senator, but they'll cut the veterans. They're not suffering. And you know what? They just gave themselves a cost of living uh, increase for the year. Well, every year. Well, why can't somebody on federal or state aid give themselves a raise? Why can't that happen? Yeah, well, they get 175000 oh, 100, for hardly working. So uh, this, this friend of ours is getting 120 a month. Why can't he vote himself a raise and say, double this for me from now on? Right. 240 a month. Is that too much to ask? They're all citizens of the United States. I mean, I food. Mean, We're talking about food now. Yeah. And everybody's crying about the weather destroyed crops and food prices are going up. I don't know how these people on st food stamps or EBT cards are uh, affording this. Well, a woman uh, in the spotlight made a statement today uh, on a banner, and it says, it is not the... Um, it's not necessarily always the lack of jobs and the lack of um, and, and the jobs that are available or not available. It's the lousy pay that causes poverty in this country. When they say jobs were up last month, what types? What type of jobs? of jobs? Are they the types of jobs that will pay a mortgage or a rent? No. Will they help to buy health insurance? No. no. Why are most people in the fast food industry also on welfare or getting some? Sort Walmart of employees are on welfare. Yeah, so Walmart. Let's be honest. Yeah. Just a job is not a job. Okay. Let's be honest. Walmart no. for Walmart is counting every job. Yeah. It should not be. Yeah, can you pay for your utilities and rent and a car car payments? And ca you got to you got to go shopping. College education, yeah. what have you? Well, uh, yeah, things yeah. where the money just flies out the window. It's got wings. It has wings on it. Well, they, and, the uh, the Congress uh, did not want to uh, forgive the student loans with the, any God, interest. They, thank God they did now. Oh, they did now. Yeah, because the interest yeah. was was I don't astronomical. Know about forgive, but reduce. How are they so, going to pay it back if there's no work? If the economy and the job market is in well, shambles? Even some of these sky high student loan debts are so sky high. It'll be a different, a good portion, a couple decades, at least, unless you get the lottery or something. Or maybe your whole lifetime you'd be paying back yeah, the student loans. Unless you get a break and you know, a new product or company that makes billions or millions. Yeah. We get the lottery. Otherwise, you're going to be paying a, yeah. a huge chunk of your income back to this. And again, again it comes in, it flies right out again. Right. Now, I was uh, <clears throat> discussing with Reverend Bill Saturday about uh, Mr. Rob Walton of Walmart. A uh, federal judge ordered him to pay back his employees the, uh, the money, the pay that they owed him with penalties because he withheld, you know, it's kind of like the restaurant owner who takes a uh, pool my, uh, tips. A guy worth billions and he's withholding. <coughs> Billionaire. Me. Withholding from people. He withheld their, their pay because he felt like it. And, he felt like and it. then when the when the judge, the federal judge, ordered him to pay back with, and pay penalties, he ordered his employees, anybody who, I'll cut the checks, but anybody who cashes their paychecks will be fired. Now, you believe that? And they're going to let him get away with this? I don't think so. No, he's not going to get away with it. He never will. But just picture he's the mentality. He's a multi-billionaire. Multi-multi-billionaire. And you're worried about how much money, per se. Do you, do you enjoy sticking it to your people? Power trip. Why? For what? I don't know. What are you getting out of it? I don't know. Power trip. He's sadistic. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big man because I'm hurting people. What's the power trip here? I don't get it. I don't get it either. Power for what? Hurting? How much money? You have the power to hurt? Well, that's what he's doing. So what's the what's the big thrill? These are employees that have to go on welfare. Wouldn't it be more thrilling seeing you people happy and laughing and smiling, enjoying themselves, no, living a little no. bit? And, and it goes back to how much money is enough to make somebody happy. You know, I mean, I think this is a form of a some form of mental illness when you want to keep you have so much more, more than you could ever spend, and you still want to keep sticking it to people. Pathological. Something's wrong. It's sociopath. Something is wrong. An, elit an elitist attitude. Yeah. Sociopath. I've, you just enjoy sticking it yeah. to people. I mean, five, five, uh, two billion is not enough. They want five billion. Then they want ten billion. Meanwhile, your employees are in poverty. They're in poverty. And you look at somebody like Bill Gates and his wife. They're giving the majority of their fortune to charities and foundations. Oh, he really donates? Oh, big time. He's a huge philanthropist. Most of these super wealthy are, yeah. yes. Yeah, I mean, I can't. got to give them credit. I you really have to. So. I cannot understand you know. those those Waltons from, uh, I think they're from Arkansas. Arkansas, Little Rock. I mean, I mean, I know Benton. Benton, Benton Arkansas, I mean, sorry. knowing your employees have to go on welfare and you, you, you steal, you might as well call it stealing their paychecks. 
say, expecting them to work for free as slaves. Can you tell me how much it would hurt them to pay twenty twenty five an hour to their all their employees? They still be making billions. Remember what I said to you weeks ago? Lower your profit margin. Instead of making two hundred billion for the year, you make a hundred and seventy billion for the year. So what? You're not hurting. No. And if your stockholders don't like it, sell the stock, or we'll buy it back from you. We'll buy it back from you. We'll buy it back from you. Yeah. Right. It's that simple. Yeah. Don't let greed. Ruin your humanity, I guess. This goes back to thinking long term in business instead of short term. I would never do this to people. I couldn't do this. Had super tech come to fruition, I uh, there's no chance. No, you got to think. I wasn't that kind of a person. I know because you you believe that in the long run when you think your people, the money will be. If we're that good, the money will always and automatically be there. Take care of your people. Listen, my uncle gave me a book when I was in high school. It was written by a, a at the time a famous psychologist named Dr. David Schwartz. It was called The Magic of Thinking Big. I've heard of that. And you know what he said? He says, if you put service first, money will take care of itself. I just got through saying to you, it will automatically be there if we're that good. Remember when I said to you a few weeks ago on one of the shows? Well, Super Tech was always striving for perfection. And some guy said to me, you can't achieve perfection. I said, exactly. So we'll never become complacent because we will always have a goal. Because you can't achieve it, right? Well, then we'll always be fighting for perfection because it can't get there. Well, didn't, so we'll I, didn't IBM working. didn't IBM rest on its laurels? And, and for a little period, and they yeah, and they Apple did. they didn't they they yeah. made a joke about so, Apple. And so did GM too. When they every every five division back then, yeah, all looked alike in the late seventies, early eighties. They all looked yeah. alike. They rested on their laurels. Yeah. I would say most. Corporations, not just American, but around the world, have all made their mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. You know what? Uh, you, what, know, what so. you know what they used to say way back. The American car companies. Everybody used to make fun of the words "made in Japan." Well, they did. It was junk, and I think it was when their their premier, or whatever their leader was, way back in the '60s or whatever. He said, "Enough is enough. We've had enough. We're putting quality in the rest of." It just shows what a good administrator or administration can do. It was junk. It was laughed at, and by and for good reason. Yeah. Well, Hyundai's were laughed at when they first came out in South Korea. And Kia too. And but Kia. Look at them now. Samsung. Samsung. And top of the line. The LG. Yeah, which uh, means that it's attitude that that it's administration, and it trickles yeah. down from your leadership. They're saying enough is enough. We don't need to make junk. And sure enough, the quality is what it skyrocketed. It skyrocketed. It's skyrocketed. Uh, it's incredible. Because of the right attitude. Well, William H. Morrow the Third. It was great having you as always. Good time. Next time. And bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. Just want to thank our uh, official voiceover artist, William, William H. Moore III, for a, a very invigorating show, uh, my meeting with him, and the promo. Uh, well, me and William Morrow were discussing um, at one point in time uh, the service industry where uh, waiters and wait waitresses do not get minimum wage, they get like two dollars and change an hour, slightly over two dollars an hour, and uh, they, be simply because they, they earn tips, now, um, which is not fair, um, and also NFL cheerleaders also get slightly over two dollars an hour, um, 
and uh, evidently the minimum wage law does not apply to these people. Now, what I told him was, I have a strong feeling, personally I wouldn't do it. If I was a waiter, I would refuse to pool my tips with everyone else because that means that all of the incompetent waiters and waitresses that do not check on you at your table will get the same amount of tips as me busting my ass, which is not fair at all. But that's not what the main reason why I'm against it. I'm against it because a restaurant owner could very easily skim off the top of the pool tips, steal money from the pool tips, and tell the, the workers that today we only have this amount in tips. In other words, if the tips are pooled and it amounts to, let's say, $5,000, he can only claim, the restaurant owner can claim that only uh, uh, like 3000 was collected and he can steal money. Now, I also mentioned an example. I said Mario Batali at his restaurant, he was stealing the tip money from his wine servers. Like he wasn't uh, rich and famous enough. He, Not needed, enough. he needed to take money from the, his wine servers in, in his restaurant. You're not rich enough. A ri a rich is not rich enough for the rich. Apparently. Never. You know? Never. So, Hall of Shame, this week's Chisels Hall of Shame, are American restaurant owners who insist on pooling tips, including diners. So shame on you. Of course, it's old hat, but Mario Batali was doing that. And Walmart, who is, has a permanent seat in the Chisler's Hall of Shame for making very unfair uh, slave driving work schedules for their tractor trailer drivers without sleep, which caused the accident, which uh, uh, made uh, uh, actor and um, I mean comedian Tracy Morgan's leg uh, amputated. His leg was amputated from what I hear. And uh, one of his co-workers died in the crash. I believe a writer. But all because of the greedy Walton family, who are also permanent mem members in our Chisler's Hall of Shame. So, that's the story. But as far as food service workers getting that amount and, and having to pull your tips, do you think being that it's a cash business dealing with tips, that it's quite possible for the restaurant owner to steal some of that money? Absolutely. If he or she wanted to. Absolutely. All right, make myself a little uh, useful here. And take the... <coughs> yeah, it's very possible. I'm sure it happens a lot. Okay. Okay. Happens a lot. Alright. We will sink our teeth back into these readings with the balance of oh. today's Father's Day 2014 show. Uh Gleasses. Oh, I'm sorry. Gleasses. Here you go. Spectacles. Yeah. Well, we were talking Thank you, Ben Franklin. We would take, yeah, Ben Franklin, who, uh, well, ex -president of the United States. who, according to Michelle Bachman of Minnesota, claimed he was the former president of the United States. <laughs> and I would like to imitate the sound that the imbecile uh, Michelle Bachman and Sarah Pellin make when they open their mouth. Um, now, um, Elizabeth Hasselbeck is not stupid, she's just uh, mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's just a mean person, uh, her and uh, um, Ann Coulter. But uh, Palin and um, Bachman are the village idiots, and this is what I hear when they talk.
That's how. That's what I hear. I don't even pay attention to what they have to say. Totally, total numbskulls, to say the least. All right. As someone who has worked with stray cats, I must respond. No one is suggesting that the murder of an animal is morally equivalent to the murder of a child. This is a false argument. I don't understand why one has to be worse than the other. They are both inhuman actions. But those who kill a defenseless animal act as if they are less than human. That's why the young people accused of killing Quattro the cat must be punished. Their actions are examples of the least human thing a person can do. Kill a small animal Making that has done nothing. And, and torturing them, which is happening too often in the United States. Tortured animals, neglected pets, uh, dogs and cats being starved, being beaten. Um, Don't leave your friend in a hot car. Yes, I like that banner. Do not leave your friend in a hot car this summer. And it has a, a cartoon of a dog with the windows shut in the car. Mm. Because uh, uh, one person who's a member of my group, a woman, said, if I see a dog like that, I'm taking a hammer from my car and I'm shattering the window. And, and she said, I'm not going to allow an animal to suffer. <laughs> It is so incredibly wrong, it cannot be excused. Humans are supposed to be the protectors of the weak, not the murderers. Oh, you see how they treat the homeless now? Duh. Ayn Rand wouldn't like that, to protect the weak. Ayn Rand uh, should have been used as crocodile food. You see, the guy... Uh, uh, on the video feeding crocodiles from his mouth in the water with them. Smart cookie, oh smart. I saw somebody teasing a croc in a in a public uh, exhibit trying to be macho putting his head between, you know, the croc's mouth was open, it was gaping. Yeah. It was a young croc, but still kept on putting his head in and in and out, in and out, and finally the croc nailed him. <laughs> and everybody yeah. came over and then and, and, they're hitting the crocodile. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. Why can't people understand that violence toward a defenseless animal is a criminal act? We do not throw rocks just because we can. If these children did this heartless act, they must be punished. Their parents don't want them punished. Is it any wonder the kids are like they are? But doesn't this encourage this uh, pathological behavior? Yeah. So sociopathic, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sociopathic behavior? Uh -huh. It encourages it. Yeah. It seems like uh, many modern day parents do not believe in discipline and setting the right example. I wouldn't even say discipline, I would say correction. I think correction is putting it mildly when a, when a cat died from being stoned to death mm -hmm. I think I think it, um, it's beyond that I think there should be a jail time to scare the crap out of these teenagers scared straight scared straight that program yeah yeah it should be and, uh, and, and if the teenage boys that do this they, they should be given a, a, a woman's hair extension prison so they can be somebody's bitch <laughs> for further punishment of what they have done. It seems that a new study has found that people who took lengthy daily naps, yeah. especially younger people, died younger really? than people who did not. Really? So does that mean naps for older people are not good? 
lengthy naps. What do you mean, like sleeping all day? Maybe like two hours, three hours. Yeah, I'm not what, talking about power naps. What about people who have insomnia? They're, I mean, you mean beyond beyond eight hours sleep? Beyond your normal sleeping. Beyond. Sleeping. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger in his bodybuilding book recommended ten quality hours per day. In the end say some North Jersey doctors specializing in sleep, a power nap of between 20 and 30 minutes can increase your energy, alertness, and your productivity. Whether it does anything to improve or impair your health uh, is another story. Okay, cats do it all the time. Cats sleep 16 hours a day. Uh. <laughs> Naps cat nap, yeah. of longer than 30 minutes where you fall into a deeper sleep may cause you to wake up groggy, feeling technically known as sleep inertia, and should therefore be avoided. As long as a short nap is part of a total of eight hours of sleep for adults over a 24-hour period, experts say you should get a boost from it. There are definitely benefits to napping, uh, said the Jeffrey Barash, medical director of the Valley Hospital in Ridgewood's Center for Sleep Medicine. Oh, they like treat people with sleep apnea and things of that nature. It does improve cognitive function, snoring. But too often the nap is a bandage to a bigger problem. What we do know is that in the Western world, people are sleeping two hours less than they were a hundred years ago. Sure. These schedules, these damn corporations have put on everybody. Since electricity, basically. Which makes sense. It's in using the nap to try to break, excuse me, to make up for drastic amounts of lost overnight sleep time where things get more complicated. It's not whether the nap is helpful or harmful, it's more a matter of why people need to nap in the first place. The 13-year study involving 16,000 people in England conducted by researchers at the University of Cambridge revealed that those who napped more than an hour each day were 32% more susceptible to early death. The study published in this month's American Journal of Epi Epidemiology found that frequent nappers, those who nap for more than two hours every day, <coughs> had a greater risk of death by heart disease, cancer, and respiratory illness. The researchers said the reason for the link is unknown. But Dr. Barash opined nappers may have other health issues. They may not get enough sleep, which is not healthy. Six hours or less of sleep shortens mortality. Or they may have a sleeping disorder or some other medical condition. Maybe depression. That makes them nap. So it's probably more of an unmasking issue in terms of what the nap is revealing. If, as suggested, it is revealing a sleeping disorder such as obstructive sleep apnea, there are some exciting new prospects for treatment, in addition to the traditional options that have varying results. Obstructive sleep apnea, which experts say affects 12 million 
to 18 million Americans is a snoring condition where breathing stops for short spells because of an obstruction of airflow caused by relaxed muscle tissue in the upper airway. Consequences of the disorder include high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. Until this month, according to Villa, treatment options included surgery, which he said only works about half the time and can be very painful. Wearing a dental device fitted to the person's mouth, which he said has had a moderate success. And the most popular treatment? The so-called continuous positive airway pressure, the, ca the CAP, the CPAP. You know where you put the mask over here at night? You get oxygen? In which the mask, the mask is worn that blows air into the passageway to open it up. Now comes what could be the most promising option yet for treatment of sleep apnea. The FDA has just approved a nerve stimulator implant, sort of like a little pacemaker device that tightens up the nerves in the back of the neck. It's brand new. Implanting the device would, of course, entail surgery. Which should always be a last resort. Always get a second and possibly a third opinion before any surgery. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure, man. Um, what's cooking? We have another not so serious situation. Lighter subject? A lighter subject. My husband has a male co-worker, Bo, who comes to our house occasionally. We have two bathrooms, one of which is our bedroom, the other is the guest bathroom. Yeah, okay. When Bo needs to use the bathroom, he goes into our bedroom. He's nosy, he's snooping around. I don't trust this guy. And uses ours. Why, did, why doesn't he tell him that that bathroom in the bedroom is off limits to everyone? He never asks. Why does he come over so often? He just goes in. Sounds like somebody I know who just lights up their cigarette in my car without asking me. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm starting to get demonstrative, you know. Rudeness, it's all rudeness. Ill mattered. He just goes in even after I have pointed out the guest bathroom. Tell him he can't I can't he can't come here anymore. I'm so it sorry. creeps me out. Why does he have to go in and I know what you're talking about. The, the master bedroom has its own bathroom. Many large homes have this. And uh, when my uh, aunt and uncle lived in, uh, on the Chesapeake Bay, uh, they had a home, uh, I believe it was uh, St. Michael's, Maryland. They had a home where the master bedroom had its own bathroom, and it had, uh, there was a jacuzzi in there, but, you know, it's for them. Then there's the guest bathroom. So this guy totally disregarded her request. He's a guest in, in their home, and he rudely always walks into the master bedroom bathroom. I feel like he is invading my personal space. What can I do? Sick the dog on. Bo is intimidating. He thinks he can do whatever he wants. Well, then, then he is—he uh, should be treated as an intruder. 
if he doesn't want to comply with the homeowner's uh, rules, then he's an intruder. I agree. Your husband's co-worker's behavior is creepy. If you have med medications in your bathroom, you should check to be sure he isn't helping himself to some of them when he visits. What's to stop him from snooping in, in the medicine cabinet and taking things? Because you can't seem to convey the message to Bo, the boar. Before his next visit, ask your husband to tell him that guests are supposed to use the guest bathroom. And if that doesn't discourage you... You can't come over anymore. Install a lock on your bathroom door. No, if he doesn't respect your home, then he cannot visit anymore. You know, people are, are you know, people walk on eggshells, they're afraid to say the word no. Uh, just like these young yuppie parents are afraid to say no to their children. And in this case, a rude person like Bo, no, you can't do it, or you can't come over anymore. You gotta break a few eggs in life to make an omelet, my friend. <clears throat> Fajr's Day. I've worked for minimum wage many times. Oh, God. Selling programs, frying chicken. Janitor. Janitor! Factory work! I thought they were union workers, janitors. I thought Costonians, like in schools and things, made pretty good money. I thought they made pretty good money, yeah. Ice cream scooper. In each case, I saved the money, put it towards college and graduate school. whoop they do He didn't have to put it towards surviving! Look. No, no matter, the only thing a minimum wage job will, will do is pay some miscellaneous bills off, you know, or, 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 or give you food money or beer money or whatever, but... What is that, $10,000 a year? You can't live. How can't. many miscellaneous bills are you going to pay off with that? It's How not going to you go, use it for survival? It won't go far. Rent, food, clothes. Let's just, just those three items. Let's just take food. And going back and forth to work, of course. It might not, it might or might not supply enough groceries for the year. Correct. It's not a lot. It's really chump change. Right. So how did he put it towards college and grad school? College? Hey, in a, in a, in a, in a free democracy, college and health care are supposed to be rights, not privileges. <laughs> The only rights in this country are for corporations and the wealthy. Yeah. You have to understand this. I told, the only ones with rights. I told my Chinese friend, because she, you know, she works in business, uh, and I says, because she asked me for advice, you know, lots of times. I says, look, Chinese companies should not take business advice from American corporations. You want to take, you want to uh, uh, go to school and learn had to start from nothing and be a big success. Learn from the South Koreans. You know, I mean, Samsung, you see how far they've come. The car companies, uh, Hyundai, Kia. But well, let's take Samsung, for example. You know, unbelievable. Well, these are because of trade treaties well, they're, and policies they're putting, that we have made with them. They're emphasizing quality control their engineers are apparently top-notch, and they, they just That's emphasize the point. quality. That's products. besides the point. You can make the best products in the world. If you have nowhere to sell them, you don't get rich. Okay? So that's two different issues. Right. But but China has a reputation. Who do you think... For, no. Who do you think has made China? U.S into the big thing it is today. The U.S. That's correct. Why? Because the U.S. doesn't want to pay a, a, a living wage to American workers. And they want to blame unions for everything. And China now makes all kinds of fake products. But, sells knockoffs. Sells as knockoffs. Yeah. But, but, Viagra, which don't work. And things. 
Hey, hey. Well, I, I can just see some guy pops a blue pill, thinks he's going to have erection for four hours, and he got dud. Dudsville. He should get himself a jar of arginine powder. She. Nature's Viagra or Cialis. Take a few grams and a drink a half hour before the beloved event. <laughs> And then you'll you'll hear a big noise. Boing. Have they increased the minimum wage by forty percent, as many as are proposing now, I would have had more money. But I would have gone to college anyway. I'd have borrowed what I needed. It wouldn't have lifted me out of poverty. Who the hell's gonna lend a guy making ten thousand dollars a year money to go to college? Unless, one. unless the bank Co-signer? has a hidden agenda. Oh, you mean like they, when back in the day when the banks gave all those mortgages to people they shouldn't have given mortgages to? Yeah. Which is what the Chase, uh, the people who worked for, worked for Chase Bank said when they were uh, uh, going having bill collectors call a a, 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 a a person we interviewed and you know the person couldn't make the payments uh, you know for they said uh, I think the individual told them say look you, you're gonna you're gonna write off all these people that owe money on their credit cards anyway they're all gonna get written off and uh, of course, they made excuses at Chase Bank, but he says, uh, yeah, the problem all started when they gave mortgages to all those people that didn't deserve it. Well, that was the government's fault. The right wing says that was the government's fault because the government forced them to do that. Forced? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we had a, we had a big blizzard snowstorm. Oh, it's Obama's fault. Everything's Obama's well, fault. Yeah. Everything's Obama's fault. Well, yeah. Blame it on the Democrat. Actually, blame it on the black man in the White House. That's that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. He's illegitimate. They're blaming he never on elected the president. He never should have been president. He has no birth certificate. He was born in Kenya. Oh, he still hasn't produced a birth certificate? Of course he has. That Mr. Trump, he just doesn't believe Why it. Why does the media concentrate on what the stupid Republicans have to say and never give a rebuttal to the Democrats? The media is like painting this demonizing picture with Democrats. Good for news, right? Good for news. To make people think that Barack Obama does not have a birth certificate. When in reality, he does have a birth certificate. Of course, he had a birth certificate. He had it. He had it at the time. Uh, it was in a newspaper. The, you know, the happy event. And it's not good enough for the Republicans. Well, it's not good enough for Donald Trump. Because you can't. Trump drives this thing. You can't win with right wingers. You can't ne negotiate. Excuse me. Right. You can't negotiate Ideologies. with them. Ideology. They cannot be changed. There is no compromising. There, there is no. Uh, the word bipartisanship means you let them win. That's correct. Hey, now you're learning. And that's Bipart why there's no been no bipartisanship with uh, Obama and uh, Congress. Bipartisanship means two people get together and they come to uh, an agreement, which meeting of the mind, which benefits both parties, both sides. And it's supposed to be 50-50 well, in value. Actually, if you're talking about the government, it's supposed to benefit us. I don't see a, I don't see okay. a benefit at us. Not I, both I, sides of the aisle, but us. I don't see signing the Monsanto Protection Act That's correct. benefiting we the people. Or the fracking thingy. Or fracking and poisoning the water like down in North Carolina. But don't you say nothing about it. Yeah, and it, don't you try to do anything about it either. Oh no, the North Carolina wants you to, uh, the right wingers want you to drink the poison water right. and, and drop Shut dead. Shut up. Shut up and die quietly. That's right. That's what they want. That's right. Anyway, this gentleman going to college on uh, minimum wage 
he'd had borrowed what I needed. It wouldn't have lifted me out of poverty. And therein lies the problem. Mm -hmm. Actually, just one of the problems. The minimum wage debate is the equivalent of stretch pants. It takes on the shape of the user. President Obama says raising it will lift people out of poverty. Big business says it will cost folks their jobs. Small business says it will close them down. But 10 10 an hour is still chump change. And poor people say, bring it on! Listen, you got to do what Seattle, Washington did. They raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour. Then again, research shows that poor people, surprisingly, are less affected than you think. Because a huge percentage of poor Americans aren't working at all. Now, before we dissect who is right or wrong, let us agree to throw studies out of the window. Because you can find a study to make every argument in this debate. Case in point. The White House's Council of Economic Advisors did a briefing this year that said raising the minimum wage from 725 to 1010 could be done with no job losses. Hooray! Then the Congressional Budget Office released a nonpartisan report that said such a move would result in 500,000 fewer jobs. Boom. Two reports. Same government. In such cases, it's best to try common sense. Common sense tells you that $7.25 an hour doesn't get you much these days. Common sense also tells you that businesses, especially big chains like McDonald's, are in it for profit. And if you chop their profit by raising labor costs, they are not going to sit there and sigh, oh well. They are going to raise their prices to regain that profit or lay off white workers to do it. The first will result in higher costs for those who eat there, including many poor people. The second will create unemployment. Multiply this by a zillion examples and you see that while some will make more, others may make nothing and pay higher prices. Even the government's own Congressional Budget Office study. I know, it's a study. But you're going to want something besides my logic. Says the increase to 10, 10 an hour would lift 900,000 Americans out of poverty. But cause 500,000 to lose their jobs. No matter where you stand, that's bad math. Now let's use common sense on who benefits from minimum wage hikes. Our perception is that all minimum wage workers are industrious single moms trying to run a household or earnest but low educated men working 40 hours to put food on the family table. The facts don't bear this out. You don't have to necessarily be low educated. You could have a fantastic resume and just, you just can't find a job. Many minimum wage workers are more like I was. More than half are under 24. Most are white. 50% work in food preparation or serving. And two out of three are part-time. Mm. A recent Forbes magazine article by an economics professor, Jeffrey Dorfman, said, the reality is that families in poverty very rarely have a full-time worker in the family. In fact, only 17% of the time. 
People are not in poverty because the minimum wage is too low. People are in poverty because they are not working. We're not working enough. But they need jobs. Ironically, some suggest that raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour actually would attract more workers living above the poverty line. Thus nudging out the very poor such a hike was designed to help. Now, having said that, let's apply common sense to how minimum wage workers are treated. Recent walkouts at fast food chains are protesting not just wages, but practices, such as making employees sign for two, no hours guaranteed, but availability whenever called. That's unfair. Yeah, you could be working less than part-time hours with that. A low wage should not mean low treatment. The government could do something about that. It could also make sure the minimum wage rises with inflation. Bro, minimum wage people like the homeless are degraded in a capitalist society. Your, your, your human value it goes according to monetary possession. What you're worth. And it's not right. It's not fair. And it could increase the earned income tax credit, which is tied to how much you earn, your family size, so that the benefits go to people who truly need it. Common sense says a family of four should live above the poverty line if a member has a full-time job. But common sense also says in today's world it's almost a luxury to have one breadwinner per family. Mm -hmm. Common sense says higher wages put more money in the economy but not if jobs are lost because of it. Mm -hmm. Common sense says the marketplace sets its own rules, yet we all know businesses are greedy by nature. Uh, yeah, yes they are. Well, the big ones are. I'm not, I'm not going to put down the uh, mom and pop stores and the small entrepreneurs, but definitely the fat cats are greedy by nature. All of this would be solved if multinational corporations got together and said, you know, we make enough, we can trim our profits for the common good. Wake me up when that happens. We make enough, which is true, they do. They do, yes, that's, that's true. But they want more. But that's how the obsession of greed is. Exactly. It's it's a and you know what? It's like a, it's like a cult. It's like a it's a I, I, it's an obsession. It's and a, you know what they what? and you know what they say? It's you with the problem. You're covetous. You are covetous. How am I because covetous? you want to make what I have. I'm not looking to 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 have to be a multi-billionaire like Bill Gates. I just want a comfortable, decent. Happy life. That's how they have turned the argument around. Oh my God, I mean... The I'm same thing they did years ago with taxes. They made the little guy into a fellow ally. In other words, don't tax the big guys because they're going to tax you. You little guy. Uh, so the little guy fights with them. The billionaires. They pity the billionaire. Oh yeah, my heart bleeds for them. You see that banner of um, on the top? It's it's split in, in half. The top section shows a photo of how uh, people in other countries protest, and it, and it looks like it looks like the Vatican when the Pope makes you know makes speeches. It was like God it looked like hundreds of thousands of people out there protesting, which was an actual photo taken. And then on the bottom it says, uh, "This is what Americans do," and it has a bunch of a bunch of uh, young people online staring at their smartphones, texting, <laughs> which means they don't care. Americans they stay in their own little clicky worlds, and they just don't get involved. And they don't care, and uh, 
they always think somebody else is going to fix their problems. And if they do get involved, they get a police record. A dossier by the CIA and FBI. I, I like I like to see as a potential I like, terrorist. I like to see them arrest a one hundred or two hundred thousand people protesting. Well, they don't have to arrest them; just mow them down. Nothing faster with these guns, with these magazines that hold a hundred clips or whatever. You're talking about the, the shells. T like Tiananmen Square in yeah, China? Yeah, no. Tiananmen Square, they, they didn't mow the guy down that stopped the tanks. Well, they're tanks, I mean... He stood in front of four or five tanks. The tanks stopped. I don't know if they mowed anybody down. Well, mowing, mowing down that many protesters would definitely start a civil war and a revolution in the United States. All well, the, I would imagine so. All those, but how all, would that get started? All those red, all those redneck uh, NRA guys would suddenly become heroes. The people that are packing heat in their homes they, until they, they got the power. They will, and then they, they might be just as bad as the government That's they replaced. Right. This is what a, a psychologist, a sociologist That's mentioned right. one time to me. The problem with revolutions is sometimes they, they're, they're worse than what they replaced. That's what happened to the, 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 the Soviet Union. That's what happened to the French Revolution. That's what happened to... We were lucky we got ours. You, you mean the together. Russian, when the Russian Revolution replaced the Tsars, the right. Romanovs. And the Tsarzinas. The Tsarinas uh, with uh, their version of socialism. Then they became corrupted. It became a totalitarian dictatorship, military dictatorship, and the same thing with Castro's, right? The Castro clan. Castro was never strong, though. He, he, no, but it's like uh, you know. He oh, had to depend on the Soviet Union for his yeah. strength. So um, Hillary Clinton is pushing to lift the Cuban embargo. Never heard about it. You never heard about it? Nope. It should have been lifted a long time Years ago. ago. I think Obama mentioned he wanted to lift it way back when. Well, it must be a little too heavy. Why are they not lifting the embargo? Had, I mean, he lifted those weights when he was working out there. Why the hell can't he lift the embargo? You know, unless the the Republican Congress is keeping the embargo on them. I would say because because they hate Castro. They, because Castro ain't in power anymore. His son is. Well, they well. G.W. Bush uh, refused help after uh, Hurricane uh, Katrina. Uh, Castro and uh, even Hugo Chavez was offered help for the poor that w lost their homes, and the Bush administration uh, refused. Um, it's a stupid situation. Okay. Refused them because they're. It's a stupid situation. Well. Listen, as more people are becoming poor after being middle class and Americans are becoming more angrier by the day, they better wake up, man. Americans better wake up and realize what what, and whom they're voting for and that the proof is in the pudding and the pudding shows that the, their lives are getting worse. They're not getting better. But I don't, you know, I don't understand how somebody could be hypnotized by an ideology, huh. a cult, and, and and meanwhile they don't have a pot to piss in, but they're voting for a candidate that's all for business and not for them, but, but they're reelecting him. They're voting for him. That candidate portrays themselves as being religious. Ah, the religious compared nuts. to a Democrat who is nothing more than a baby killer. A secular humanist. They're religious nuts. Exactly. No wonder Jesse Ventura feels that organized religion has caused so much trouble in the history it's of the world. It's not a realization. You just check history. It's not Jesse Ventura's thingy to come up with. It's been going it's on. It's history. Crying out Well, you said the Catholic Church. 30 million people trying to convert them by the sword. 
Well, they they well, collect that's for their benefit, they isn't it? They collectively killed fifty, didn't they? fifty, 50 million. million. Yeah. Hey, they, they we throw numbers around, okay? And they a were, lot of people. And they were part. They were in league with the conquistadors, stealing everything from the Native Americans. You know, hey, it's all about business. Right, and the greed doesn't stop. What do you think? Columbus came over here to, to discover America. He didn't know what he was discovering. He wanted to find a shorter route to India. That wasn't. He wanted Mula. Yeah, that's what he wanted. So Queen Isabella put up those ships because it was a it was a business venture. It was connected to uh, yeah, that's trade between Europe and India. Always follow the cowrie trail, the money trail. The money trail. Yeah, he wanted to find a shorter route. Okay, we're done. We're done. Okay, thank you for joining us for this week's Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Have a very pleasant whatever's left of this weekend. Day, yeah. this is, there's not much left. Father's Day, you know. If your father's, if your father's a nice guy, treat him well. If he's a, a louse, don't worry about it. Save your money. If he's a louse, give him lice. Give him lice. Give him, fl <laughs> give him flied lice. Roast Pope Flied Lice. Oh, I forgot to ring my levity bells today. The levity bells. That's the first joke. All right, say goodbye to these people. Hello, people. All right. This has been a Megalife 21 production.